The confluence of the rivers Tweed and Teviot are nearby, whose salmon have been running upstream for some 10,000 years. This is the most expensive salmon fishing beats in the world, with anglers from far and wide paying enormous sums for a day's sport. The TV presenter Chris Tarrant is a regular. Upon entering Kelso, you may notice a set of rather grand gates that lead to nowhere, designed by Gillespie Graham for a now long-vanished mansion. We pass over the fine bridge leading into Kelso, which was designed by John Rennie, a blueprint for his famous Waterloo Bridge in London, the lamps from which now adorn this structure after the dismantling of the latter in the 1920s. Kelso Abbey was founded by King David in about 1128. It has perhaps suffered worse than the other border abbeys over the years, but was at one time a school that listed amongst its pupils a young Walter Scott. The cobbled town square has an almost continental feel to it. The town sits at the foot of the drive to Flores Castle. Flores was remodelled from 1838 for the 6th Duke of Roxburgh by Playfair, and what a job he did over the following 11 years. The castle is like a fairy tale palace, with pepper pot turrets, castellated parapets, and a wealth of rich detail. It's the largest inhabited castle in Scotland, and remains the centrepiece of the 50,000 acre estate of the Duke and Duchess of Roxburgh. Floors is open to the public. The castle is filled with outstanding works of art and furniture, and has a restaurant, gift shop, and terrace coffee shop. With the walled garden and garden centre, and with waymarked riverside and woodland walks, all this makes Floors a destination that happily fills a whole day out. The setting of floors seems to have remained unchanged. It looks out, as it always has, over a wide sweep of meadow to the river and distant roofs and spires of Kelso, the town located a discreet distance of a mile away from the big hoose, with to the right of the town the site of old Roxborough Castle, whilst the distant border hills act as a final backcloth. It was here in 1460, on the 3rd of August, that King James II, whilst attacking the English-held Roxborough Castle, died when his cannon, the Lion, exploded and killed him. The castle had been in the hands of the English for 100 years. A holly tree is said to mark the spot where he died. His queen, Mary of Gelders, made her way to the Scots camp with her eight-year-old son and inspired the troops to take the castle and dismantled it, leaving it much as we see it to this day. Roxborough was one of the four great castles of the time, ranking with Edinburgh, Stirling and Berwick. It even had a royal mint and a walled town. As a result of this, it was a recent location for a TV series on archaeological digs. Follow the signs for Green Law and the hamlet of Hume. Hume Castle dominates the skyline for miles around and affords wide-reaching views of the Merse. The current crenellations were erected in 1800, but the castle dates from the 13th century. It was taken by Somerset in 1547, after a brave defence by Lady Hume, by Sussex 22 years later, and also fell to Cromwell in 1650. This was the ancient seat of the Earls of Hume, later Earls of Marchmont. 